Hi, it's Hazel, and welcome to my channel, Hazel and Aka Design. <clears throat> I am here continuing to play in a mad scientist kind of way. So let me tell you how this all started. You know how um, sometimes we don't do proper rotation in our freezers, and then things get away on us, and you think, oh, I don't remember what decade I put that in there. And so, so was the, the case with uh, some fro <clears throat> excuse me, some frozen whole beets. And they were, you know, kind of bigger than a golf ball, but not gigantic. And um, I had also, as I was trying, I was, I was always looking for something that I've misplaced. Um, I came across a recipe that I had for making beet ink. So I thought, okay, I'm not just going to chuck those beets out because even if they're not probably edible, well, I guess they'd still be edible, but they would not be in their prime. Why don't I boil them and make up some ink? So that's what I did. Now, um, <laughs> six beets boiled for mucho. Um, okay, I think the instruction said boil for 45 minutes or so. And then if you're pretty sure there's nothing left in them, boil them some more. So it seems to me that I kept resetting the timer on my stove 30 minutes at a time, probably minimum of an hour and a half, which is, you know, double. Um, and considering that I had six beets in there, I think I should have ended up with more than this. This is a very tiny jar. Um, but again, don't want to waste. So I figured, <clears throat> let me add some water to those. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I haven't been coughing. Don't cough until the camera turns on. Anyway, I added more water and they sat there just, you know, with no heat on for a while and color was leaching out of the beets anyway. So I thought, well, okay, maybe it's worthwhile um, trying this again. I mean, what do, what have I got to lose? Uh, <laughs> how many megawatts of electricity? Anyway, I um, boiled, but not for, not for as long. And I ended up with this. So this is, I would say this is maybe, could that be a cup? I don't know. And surplus in my um, measuring cup. Oh, and this that I've poured out of here. So this jar was full in that. So I thought, okay, let's see what is what. So what I did first was I took some, this is a really old book paper and it is... <clears throat> Mm, I can't be positive that it's rag, but it, it's certainly a nice paper. Wait, I should probably show you this one first. So this is one of those uh, watercolor type papers that you get in a wedding invitation kit. So it's got a score line. It's got this deckled edge, and this particular one has a green trim on it. So this paper is far too precious to not use, so I'm using it. Okay, this is the first batch of ink and more concentrated in color than this. And all I did, <clears throat> excuse me, in each case was use the pipette. So of course, it's just, you know, you dip it in, simultaneously squeezing the top, it sucks up the liquid. This almost sounds like science. Although I don't know what the, is that, that's not capillary action. Is, <laughs> forget I said that, probably dumb. Um, anyway, so there was quite a bit on here because I don't know that there's a great deal of control with this. But I just let it sit. Now it would, so this is the, the, um, 
the more dilute one, let's call it that. Now, if I had a brush here, I suppose I could drag this color around. Oh, you know what? Maybe it isn't. I think what I might have done, I mean, it was 15 minutes ago. You can't expect me to remember everything. I didn't squeeze, I didn't squeeze the pages together. So it's not like a Rorschach ink blot, but um, you can see here and here, I had something lighter going on. So I thought that was the more dilute one. Anyway, we'll play some more. So <coughs> I just wanted to show you that. And of course, like watercolor, a person could layer this. Um, I also looked, I have a pouch with uh, watercolor scraps. Now, this is not great watercolor paper. Uh, you know, it's the lightest weight around, lighter than this card. Um, I'll just put this up here for the time being. Let that maybe dry while we're talking. Anyway, so I uh, dribbled some on here. And you can see that that's quite a lovely color. Now, one thing to remember is that <clears throat> beet ink is a fugitive ink. So, in other words, it's not going to stick around. If, if I were to leave this, <clears throat> oh, for heaven's sakes, <coughs> I'm so sorry. Do I have a, maybe I could try a mint. Um... Do I have, uh, we know that almost everything under the sun, so to speak, will fade from sunlight and from light. That's why at the Sistine Chapel, no flash photography is allowed and the lights are dim. So in <clears throat> very fragile type of uh, artifacts and art is protected in that way. We know that if you leave your, your um, your wheels outside, your car paint will fade over time. Um, watercolor and acrylic ink, most of it has been treated in some way to make it more color fast and it will resist fading, but of course, eventually it will. We know that fabric fades from the sun and in fact uh, deteriorates to the point. It's called sun rot and fabric can just shred. So, having said all that, I'm not going to let um, fugitive ink or a fugitive quality to this stop me from using it. Because frankly, we're not making things that are going to last for 100 years. Nothing we do is archival. And um, frankly, unless you keep your journal or your art piece, you know, out, in, uh, you know, near a window or open open it's going to be protected plus don't we kind of love the fading and the aging and the you know those kinds of uh, changes to to something so also in that category is red cabbage dye and onion skin dye but again not letting that stop me okay so this this is kind of cute it could be a basis it could if i wanted to i could um, use it as a background um i mean treat it as a background and just you know embellish it it might be fun to add some doodles or some um, you know liner to it and i will i do have an assortment of pens out here and i will uh, show you some of the things that I've been playing around with. Oh, I also had this book page that um, if you saw a video that I did some time ago, you know that I um, had gessoed a bunch of pages and then was stamping on them and sort of coloring them with um, watercolor. So I thought, well, that's going to make the the paper receive the ink a little better. So this one I just basically spritzed on there. And you can see 
and this again because of my my more concentrated one is so um there's so little of it i'm using the other one pretty well uh, because there's more of it so anyway that on the white gesso has turned into kind of a soft pink and then i just dribbled a little bit more onto there and i could do that again just to The other thing I did, and I'll show you, even though it's not quite dry, I will show you that. I used <clears throat> the pipette to just make sort of painterly uh, marks. And you can see that that little bit of liquid that was in there goes a long way. I could pick that up. Or I could leave it, let that become a, a, a bigger area of concentration. I could re-dip. I could go over. I could let the lines fade out. And again, this paper is nothing, nothing special whatsoever. So, well, <laughs> where am I going to put all this? So then, the end paper from this book about Gainsborough, um... I used, this is where I used the, the better, thicker, <laughs> brighter ink. And isn't that a gorgeous color? Um, now, as it's, you can see here that it is, it's looking quite red or scarlet. But as it's um, drying and bleeding a little bit into this paper, it is looking a little more <clears throat> Maybe there's a bit of purple coming out of it. Um, I'm going to still let this dry. I think there are possibilities here. And I like how it's begun. And because I did it on a, on a blank piece of paper, I can just keep, you know, working on it. So then back to this one. I thought, well, okay. I was able to make kind of crude marks using the pipette. What if I used a pen? So then I pulled out my crow quill pens. I don't know, can you see that that on this particular one? <clears throat> it's got that little oval opening. And it is amazing how much ink these things take. So there's that one. Now these, and, and this is how um, I bought mine, and this is, I don't know if they still sell them this way or not. I have three surplus ones. It says these are the 102 size. Uh, super fine. I may, I oh, I should say that I'm going to be a guest seller again on Angela, the Traveling Crafters live sale. Uh, may... May 16th, I think it is. Anyway, I may decide to put these up for sale because maybe somewhere, maybe someone attending the sale would be interested in having one of these. Um, anyway, that because they're sold like that, obviously everyone, uh, when I was taking art classes, we would uh, look for a pen cap to protect both the, the point of the pen and our um, and ourselves. This is Bic on it. So anyway, okay, I showed you that one. Oval opening. Let's see, do these have... So these are, so this must be the, the 102. Now, I don't have no idea what size this is. And I think, do you see how they've just got that tiny little circle there? I think we can only hope, as I pulled out more nib holders and more nibs, we can only hope that I did a fairly decent job of cleaning the ink out of them the last time I used them. Now, um, but of course, life has changed a lot in, in the last umpteen years. So, of course, I checked with Dr. Google to see how do you clean ink off nibs. 
And it always worries me a little bit when there's more than one solution, because that sometimes means that there is no one definitive answer. You know, it's either this or this. <laughs> like, if it's straightforward, there's one way to do it. Um, but I saw some some suggestions <coughs> that I will be trying because some of these nibs are pretty dirty with caked up ink. Anyway, um, so there was wash it with warm soapy water, which seems like huh, that's all it would take. Um, another one said, <laughs> get this, spit on a paper towel and use your saliva to do it. Others said to poke it carefully and repeatedly into a potato. I imagine that means a raw potato. Uh, other solutions said use a uh, rubbing alcohol. I can't remember. Anyway, there. I think there were six ideas. So what I did was... Using the crow quill, I started making some lines. So again, it's just, it's like a dip pen. You just dip it into whatever it is. In this case, it's this beet ink. Uh, it could also be, you know, India ink or any other type of ink. And so you can see the difference, or hopefully you can see the difference in these lines that I made. The darker ones are the uh, more concentrated ink. The other one is the more... Uh, dilute ink. This stroke here, I did all in one fell swoop without um, having to reload. So I thought that was pretty good. Then some of these thicker lines, I started playing with broader tipped pens. So let me, oops. So was it? I tried this one. It didn't work particularly well, but I'm thinking, why don't I get some better paper than just that? I mean, not that this is great, but... Uh, so again, dip. Oh, there's some fuzz on there because I was trying to clean the... Try that again. Now you can imagine that you could use this to sort of doodle. Now, <clears throat> when you when you press down, it opens up those two little, like the pen, the nib is slit, and that's how the ink comes down. So you can see by by applying a little more pressure, you can broaden the um, the mark you're making. Now you can see. Let me. Whoa, that shouldn't have come out that easily. Whoops. Look at how much ink is dried up on there. Now it does. It doesn't seem to be affecting. It's not blocking the hole or anything, and the the point is clear. Like where the, I don't really want to reef on it, but if you've seen nibs, you know that they open up. Um, but I will try to clean these a little better. And typically this just, you know, pushes in. Then I tried this one and it's got, it's more sophisticated. So let's see what we get here. Very smooth. Now, can you see that there is ink trapped in there and it's not going anywhere until I press down and make things happen? If you saw, um, they were called Canadian Scribblers. If you saw the Canadian Scribblers that I had for sale the last time I was on Angela's live sale, the feature of those books, and they 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 were dated from, I think the earliest was nineteen eleven or something. 
they had blotting paper bound into the book between every between every second page was a blotting paper and you can see why you could be doing your most beautiful cursive and then all of a sudden blop and you know it could uh, I mean that's part of what we love about those old handwritten documents is because they are alive and and let's try the other ink with this other nib now I suppose this set of nibs is more like calligraphy. Um, now these were made in West, oh, how old does that have to be that we're still West Germany? Um, but you know, these are kind of precision tools. So you can see that there is quite a variety in sizes of the points. Now that says C2 and there's a little, so that would be that width there. So I think, you know, if, if you have well-made tools and you take care of them, you know, they can last you a lifetime. Uh, okay, so I'll just use the same paper so we contrast the Let's see if I can do my name here. Have to redip that's that doesn't this is chewing into the paper. Let's try this again. Again, not great paper. Now um obviously where it was when you wet paper, you weaken paper. So that would be part two of Y, part T, O, O. Let's see if I can. That's not the greatest. This is probably, look how tiny that is. Let's try the one that I said was nicer. Still using the more concentrated ink. Crisper than that one. Um, so if you think, so if you have freezer burnt <laughs> beets, um, and want to try this, I think this, oh, after those, okay, those beets were frozen. So obviously after they, uh, thawed out a bit in that boiling water, I just, you know, went in with a paring knife and cut them in half. And then I, cu I kept I kept cutting them into smaller pieces, thinking that, again, look at the scientist in me, that the more exposed surfaces, the more pigment will come out of the, out of the beet. Um, I think I would try it again using fresh beets and see if that makes a difference. We'll see how that dried. Still really lovely. Now, if I had, and maybe I do, let me just pull out my, is this, would this be the closest? Also have purple here. And these, you know, they're just pens I happen to like. I've talked about them before. They're the Stadler Tri-Plus Fine Liner. Um... Just add some color to my planner. Now let's see if we can find an area that is dry already and see what happens if we just add a few highlights. You know, almost like a, a drop shadow. And again, you don't have to be too precise about this because sometimes 
the further you are away and the looser you are, the more interesting, the more, um, the more artsy fartsy it is. And remember, you heard that here first. Let's see what the purple one does. Um, again, this is just plain. Now, that's not to say that I can't use it because, of course, I can use it. You know, here's a, an intersection. So, is this one going over that one? Then it seems like, oh, this one must be coming underneath. And it, it automatically starts becoming a little more three-dimensional. Or maybe you choose just to be somewhere in the vicinity of it. Or maybe you choose a, a color that is, you know, a contrast. <clears throat> so I think that... Um, Oh, I didn't finish telling you about the, the recipe. So boil those beets, boil the living daylights out of them. And of course, keep a cover on your pot because we don't want to lose, we don't want the pot to boil dry. The You do want it to, to boil down though, uh, because that's what creates the, the concentration. But keep setting your timer so that you don't end up with a disaster of some sort where the pot has burnt dry and the smoke detectors are ringing. And that's easy to do when you're crafting and cooking. Um, strain it, like I ran through, I ran mine, uh, I poured it, well I had a little uh, sieve that I rested on top here and I just poured um, out of the pot into the measuring cup. Now there have been, some, you know, some we some fiber did get through. I mean, there was a teeny tiny bit of um, beet, beet, <laughs> uh, but you know, you fish it out and onward. Um, to make to help now, I will be refrigerating both these jars, but I'll also try to use them as quickly as I can. Um, to to help preserve their life a bit, uh, it 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 wouldn't hurt to add vinegar and salt. Oh, you know what? I didn't add vinegar or salt to the second batch. I did it to the first one. So the proportions. Now again, this is I was winging it because I didn't get hardly anything. That's poor grammar. Um, forgive me. It if you get a cup of ink. Then you want a teaspoon of vinegar and a teaspoon of salt. Um, I think we know that even if this stuff is refrigerated, it has a limited shelf life. So I guess the solution would be either freeze it and see what happens. Uh, and or you, well, not and or. Or use it up quickly and then you don't have to worry about it. But I think there are some... Okay, let's look back at this. It's still not dry, but I think there are definitely some possibilities. And as the... Um, and again, I didn't bring a brush, so I'm not dragging any color around with a brush. Sure is reluctant to leave that spot. See how it's almost here, you can almost see peachy orangey. Come on, you guys. I hate I wanted it to be oh natural. Um and I'll tell you why I was sort of playing around with this and with this. This will be the next thing I work on after it's dry. 
you know, for a bit of depth, I could use the, um, the more dilute color. I should have probably made fewer of these marks. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, I'll tell you why I was sort of thinking about that. The other night, I took apart a book and um, not old enough to be scanned or anything. It's a foreign language one. And I did this masterboard. <coughs> Excuse me. The cutest little drawings ever. Um, now, I don't know if, it, of course, I can't read the language. Don't even, I think this might be Danish. Um, I don't know if it was biblical. I did have to eliminate some palm trees, I must say that. But there sure seemed to be a lot of sheep. There was also a shepherd. Uh, but here's this boy. So he's got sheep. Those are sheep. Uh, there are more sheep. It's, I don't know. Those could be sheep. And here's a, a little bit of everything, I think. Anyway, um, I, I love the look of this. Again, I can't scan it because it's not out of copyright. But I thought, boy, wouldn't... Can you imagine how striking that color would be on there? If I was able to pull it off. But before I go right into this. Oh, yeah, and you know what? It'll, I'm at the mercy of whatever this paper is. So it was rather thin. So it's not going to react as well as that nicer paper. Hmm. This is when somebody should be yelling at the you know, laptop or the phone or the TV and saying, it's only paper, Hazel. Except they don't have another one of these books. I got four million other books, but... Um, I don't know. How are we doing for time? Probably. Ooh, we're at the half hour mark. I guess... Sh should I try? Should I try right here in front of you? Just to prove what a brave soul I am. Oh, the other thing I tried on this. I don't know if you've been to, oh, was it Dollarama or Dollar Tree? There was a, well, I'll show you them all. So, you know, cheap as Porsche. A set of these five silicone and again, I'm sure the quality is kind of suspect. But I thought, you know, sometimes when we need to... Well, I thought about... Because this is like silicone, I guess. Uh, we all have <clears throat> the silicone spreaders, I think. But I just thought it was interesting that there were these different kind of chisel point uh, round uh, ends on here. So let me just show you. I dipped one of these. I guess it clearly doesn't stain. That's how fugitive it is. So I could make a circle with the round one. Okay, that came off nicely. I could make wider lines with this one that doesn't seem particularly exciting let's see what this one does and again maybe it's you know obviously they there is no mechanism there for it to hold any paint i'm not a paint ink see see a little fiber like that so maybe um Straining it through cheesecloth or something would have been better. Uh, I don't think I tried this one. And 
And I think because I'm using different, you know, mixing the the two colors off um, beet ink and layering, in some cases, you know, some of this paper might have been hit with this, you know, three or four times. It does create a gradation in color. Now that's a very sharp edge there. Well, let's do something about that. And you can see that, well, at least in my opinion, this little bit of white spot, uh, white space here and there is, you know, add some interest. Now, I don't think we want to leave that hard edge there either. So we'll just disperse that a bit. <clears throat> but again, this is just playtime. I love it. Um, okay. Oh, I was going to, maybe in one little corner, try, 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 try. So my most, uh, no, it wasn't that one, it was this one. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I don't know if it settles out, but let's give it a little shake or uno. Whoops, I didn't think I'd get this far on one fill. Oh my goodness, I went across the whole page and I still have ink. Well, I guess I committed. <clears throat> so, of course, one mark by itself, that just looks like maybe a river. <laughs> well, no, it probably would be blue. That looks like a highway. Why did I not start at the edge of the page? And again, I'm holding this fairly far back on the on the um, shaft of the pen because presumably that keeps me <coughs> looser. <coughs> I could also turn this upside down to ensure oh, I got a bit of fuzz. Probably off that crazy. Um, dried up. Mm, what do you call it? Baby wipe. Whoops, it doesn't help that I'm trying to ride uphill over those pins. Uh, <laughs> And, of course, you won't know this at home, but it does smell like beets. I cannot believe that there are people who don't love beets. You know, there was a, while, uh, a time there where the, the hottest thing on uh, restaurant uh, menus was um, beet, arugula, and uh, goat cheese salads. Maybe with some candied pecans, too. Oh, to die for. Now, um, Ukrainians love beets. Typically, um, we just boil them and then serve them with sautéed onions and maybe some garlic. I like them hot. But um, some people serve them cold. <clears throat> and of course, they have many. When I was the festival coordinator for the, for the Ukrainian festival that I created and, and led for 10 years, 
Uh, one year I did an article in the program about the benefits of beets. I think there was something like 10 points. Of course, the one that got the most attention is how it helps with a sexual function in men. So, just saying. Anyway, um, you know that if you eat beets, there could be a bit of a surprise in the toilet the next day. Or the next time you go. So it's just good before you start thinking you're dying and, you know, have a bleed somewhere. Just remember that you ate beets and all is well with the world. <clears throat> now this is really, this is, I've gone kind of maybe a little berserk with this. I like that I can <laughs> push and pull with this pen. It's not getting snagged. What's happening here? Did I, did I gush a little too soon? Now, if I wanted to, let's try to put a little more pressure on and vary the, the line a bit. Because, of course, the danger in just create, you know, using the same pressure and the same kind of line is that it, it looks like the same kind of line. And I think because it's such a small amount of liquid that it's not uh, degrading the paper and it's not... See, that darker line does make a difference. Uh, I don't know that either of these nibs would be much. No, that would be worse. I can't remember what this guy does. Oh, let's use that one. But let's wipe this one. Now, I'm thinking that if dried up ink can be removed, then surely to goodness, dried up beet juice can be um, removed too. Probably still had enough ink there. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. Oh, again, why didn't I start at the edge of the page? So lift and press. Whoops. Oh, did you see? Maybe I can bring some of this back and start this line a little more deliberately. When I was trying to get the last bit of the liquid out of there, did you see how the little, I don't know what those things are called, but did you see how they opened up? Yeah, this, uh, because I'm putting more on each time. Oh, I got a little dribble here. Um, where am I? I don't uh, get as far with it because it's a heavier line. And of course, this will look different after it's had a chance to dry. because it's like anything else it will dry lighter you know like when you paint your wall <clears throat> yeah i think that the um the heavier line definitely uh adds something adds some depth adds some um dimension to it Otherwise, it really was just like a, a thread almost. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I don't want to get carried away with this. I do want to, you know, stop and look at it and 
decide what it needs next because of course and that may not even happen quick like because sometimes I do these master boards and they can sit for days weeks months and then you go back to it and you think ah now I know oh my goodness it looks like I was trying to slip my wrists and it didn't work um Anyway, see how dirty that is? I'm going to keep pecking away at it. Anyway, I hope that you <laughs> enjoyed this for for whatever reason. Um, the um, It doesn't have to be beets. I think it's just fun occasionally to play with what is readily available, what's in your kitchen. I have uh, started saving onion peels again. Um, and typically we have those yellow, well, yellow, brown, whatever they're, whatever the real name is, onions. I should buy a couple of purple ones, though, because I think that would be fun. Now, I have made per um, onion skin dye before. And it was, for those of you who love yellow, you'd be so happy. It was too yellow for my liking. But as we know, it's a fugitive, so it will fade. Uh, apparently, another fugitive is turmeric. So, um, again, just know that you need to take a few extra precautions and not leave it lying about unless you're deliberately trying to fade it. So, guys, I am glad that you were here for this. I hope that... Uh, well, if you don't want to get, if you don't want to make a mess, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching me make one. Let's see, let's bring this guy back in. Still not dry. And of course, the better the paper, the more abuse you can do to it in terms of how wet you get it and so on. Let me try something here. Uh, oh, I just found one of these today. I love these pens, too. I'm, I must be a Stadler girl. Is there is there any ink left in this? Oh, my kingdom for a piece of paper that I could write on. Oh, yeah. Now, would it be light fast? <laughs> Again, does that matter? Um... Let's see what happens if we just, when the the line is so deliberate and clear, there's no mistaking where the beet ink is and where the paper is. Now, doesn't that look like it was a little body of water? Or maybe this is the water, this is the land, and that's a little island. This is so meditative, guys. Now I'm getting a little more, um, I want to say reckless, but a little more, a little less precise here. I'm changing the the, the um, where the mark is going to be maybe not hitting it exactly but that is a-okay that adds something this is such a great pen I should see if Amazon has them. I add that to my Amazon list. <clears throat> I I hate to I hate to keep asking or reminding, <clears throat> but there is a qualifying process, and if if I don't get some sales that are direct link back to me, then you know then they boot me out of the program. So. Now here I've got two colors, 
so I can, I guess I better not leave that unfinished there, but I can either, <clears throat> and I don't know, doesn't that just add something? Or am I, am I gushing over something and you're thinking, okay, when's, when does the real art begin? I just think this is so cool. And look how quickly it happens. You could do this and cheer on your favorite hockey team and just look up when they score or get a penalty. Or when hubby says, where is supper? How long have you been in there? I like it. Now, I guess what I don't know, I would hope that this pen is waterproof because if I were to go in with another color, I better not try it on here because I'll ruin it, but or could possibly ruin it. I could try it on this thing though, or on this one. Where was I, where was I? Um, <clears throat> And uh, then that would add even more, you know, interest. Because as it is, we, won't, we don't have that much change in value here. I guess if I do, do this on another good piece of paper, I should also um, have a brush on hand so that I can uh, maybe direct, uh, direct it a little more. So which part do you like better? Where I got a little more free and easy or this where it's more precise? Now, if I remembered anything about geography, is this like an archipelago of islands? Probably just embarrassed myself there. <clears throat> the other the other way to get a little more interest going is to have some of these lines like cross, even maybe if there isn't a value change. This feels like looking at the map of Europe and not knowing what anything is. You know, it doesn't, in fairness to all of us that don't know <laughs> what's going on, uh, countries have changed their names a few times in my lifetime. So how can I stay on top of it? Truly, how can I? This is too damp to work on. Anyway, I'm stopping there because, you know, before you know it, it'll be an hour. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for being here. And I hope you decide to try this. And if not this, then use a ready-made ink of some sort. You can see how much fun it is. Uh, both to add things, another element to your master boards, to create backgrounds on gessoed pages, to create something like this on a blank piece of paper, uh, to do something like this on a book page, and to do something a little more extensive on some better paper. So uh, again, thank you so much for being here and we will see you in the next one. Bye.